Tammy Abraham helps the Blues into the FA Cup quarterfinals with a second half tap in at Oakwell. Watch until the end of this review to hear all of my thoughts on yesterday's match. This is my review of the match that took place yesterday evening at Oakwell in the FA Cup 5th round between Barnsley and Chelsea, which Chelsea ended up winning by one goal to nil. So what I'm going to do for you guys in terms of this review is that firstly, I'll be giving you guys the lineup that Thomas Tuchel fielded at the start of yesterday's match. I'll then be giving you guys my thoughts on the match itself. And as always, I'll be giving you guys the positives and the negatives that I took from the match. And lastly, I'll be giving you guys my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture, which will be taking place next Monday at Stamford Bridge against Newcastle United with kickoff at 8pm UK time. So without further ado, let's get straight into this review. So kicking things off with the lineup that Thomas Tuchel fielded at the start of yesterday's FA Cup fifth round tie, and as always, starting off with the formation. It was a 3-4-3 slash 3-4-2-1. And in terms of the personnel in which Thomas Tuchel fielded, he went with Kepa in goal. He went with a back three of Andreas Christensen, Kurt Zuma, and Emerson Palmieri. He went with a midfield four, including the, sorry, he went with a midfield four, including the wing backs from right to left of Callum Hudson Odoi, Engolo Kante, Billy Gilmore, and Marcos Alonso. And he went with a front three from right to left of Hakim Ziyech, Tammy Abraham, and Christian Pulisic. So that is the lineup that Thomas Tuchel fielded at the start of yesterday. Today's FA Cup fifth round tie against Barnsley. Now for my thoughts on the match itself and as always starting off with the first half. I have to say that Barnsley made a fantastic start to the match and they made it very hard for us to, to get going to be honest. I mean they were pressing us um, very well, they were pressing us high up the pitch and whenever they lost the ball um, it was clear to see what they were going to do. I mean, their defensive line was on the halfway line whenever they lost the ball and the, um, the midfielders and the forwards um, were pressing us and making it very hard for us to pass out of the, out of the back. And believe me, we were, we, were not able to, we were not able to string a pass together in that first half or for, lo or for large part. Sorry, we weren't, we weren't able to string a pass together in that first half or... Might I say that we weren't able to do so for large parts of the first half? And my word, was it was it terrible from us? Honestly, um, Barnsley had so much joy um, down the flanks as well. I mean, Hakim Ziyech kept losing the ball. He got pressed relentlessly in that first half, and um, it just oh god, honest, honestly, guys, it was terrible. Um, from a defensive point of view, it wasn't it wasn't bad, but it wasn't. It wasn't excellent. I mean, they did end up having the best chance in the first half and it came from across from their left-hand side, which we failed to stop from getting into the box or we failed to deal with, shall I just say. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. I think it's Callum Britton or something like that. But um, yeah, I think it's Callum Britton. He just peeled off of Marcos Alonso when that cross came in and he he hit the ball towards goal, but thankfully Kepa was able to make a brilliant save and he, he kept us in it in the first half, to be honest, because Barnsley had some very good chances and they, had, they, they especially had some very good chances from um, either set-piece situations or crosses into the box and that is something that we really need to deal with and fast. But yes, um, Tammy Abraham did get brought down a couple of times um, towards the end of the first half. The first one did look as though it was a penalty, and I did say this in my reaction video, but after the match, Tammy Abraham came out and said that um, it was um, a fair decision to not give the penalty 
but um, when I saw the replay, it did look as though um, Toby Civic was it. It did look as though he didn't get the ball, and yeah, it just it just proves why VAR is needed. But um, that doesn't matter because um, he ended up getting the match winner. Um, Christian Pulisic did have a glorious chance to get the opener in the dying minutes of the first half, but he didn't really get any any um, real contact on the ball. And I felt as though it was just not a good first half overall. And we were very fortunate to go into half time at nil nil because Barnsley had some very good chances. They had the best chance of the match. At the, sorry, let me rephrase that. They had the best chance of the first half, and they weren't able to take it. But yes, um, not a good first half in my opinion. Barnsley were the better team in the first half by far, if you ask me. But yes, now for my thoughts on the second half. And I have to say that not much changed at the start of the second half. Barnsley just kept pressing us. Yes, we did make two changes and they saw Antonio Rudiger and Rhys James come on for Andreas Christensen and Marcos Alonso. And the reason why Andreas Christensen came off is because he did... Or the reason why I think he came off is because I... The reason why I think um, Andreas Christensen came off is because I think um, he picked up a knock... Um, he picked up a knock to the head at the, he picked up a knock to the head in the um, first half so obviously Thomas Tuchel probably didn't want to risk him because we do have a bit of a shortage of defenders right now but yes um, we made two substitutions at the start of the second half and I have to say that they made an instant impact because we were able to pro we're, we were actually able to progress the ball in the second half and that is something that we really did struggle to do in the first half I have to say. But I'm not going to lie to you guys, we really did struggle at the start of the second half. Barnsley were pressing us relentlessly and they continued to do so. They had some more glorious chances. Um, they ended up having way more shots on target than we did. I think the amount of shots they had on target was almost the same as the amount of shots we had in the entire game, which just tells you something. But yes, guys, um, the goal, the goal in which we scored, um, I think... I can't remember who gave the ball to Billy Gilmore in the advanced um, in the advanced position, but Billy Gilmore picked up the ball in the advanced position or got the ball in the advanced position. Um, he was in when he received the ball, shall I say? He gave it to Reese James, who was in acres of space down our right hand side, and Tammy Abraham did his very best to stay onside. And for those of you who are going to say that Tammy Abraham was offside, whilst I do understand why you say that. He was definitely onside. I mean, um, the BBC did bring out their lines, and whilst it, they they did bring out a line, and whilst it was an unofficial line, Guy Mowbray's words, it did show that he was onside when Rhys James played the ball. And yes, Rhys James um, got the ball down our right hand side in acres of space, like I said already. Passed it along to Tammy Abraham, who just tapped it home, and that gave us a one nil lead, which was very much against the run of play. Um, in terms of the game overall, but we did um, we did pick it up a bit um, before we scored the goal. So you can say that um, you can definitely argue that it wasn't, but I'm definitely going to argue that it was because of the way Barnsley were playing. And overall, I have to say that it was a, a below average performance from us, but we made our way into the quarterfinals. Um, Tammy Abraham for me was definitely our best player, and that leads me on to the positives and the negatives that I took from the match. Starting off with the positives, as always, there are two. The first one is that Tammy Abraham was the best player on the pitch, if you ask me. Yes, um, I'm not going to discredit any of the Barnsley players because they were excellent, all of them. Um, they deserve a pat on the back and they were very um, unlucky to not make it into the quarterfinals because they would have loved to be playing their South Yorkshire rivals in Sheffield United. But yes, Tammy Abraham was the best player on the pitch for me. And that is the first positive that I took from yesterday's match. The second and final positive that I took from yesterday's match is the fact that we got the job done. Even though we were below average um, performance-wise, we were able to get the job done. And that is that is a good sign, but we do need to improve um, in a lot of areas. But yes, those are the two positives that I took from yesterday. Sorry, those are the two positives that I took from yesterday's match. Now moving on to the only negative that I took from yesterday's match. And I so easily could have taken two because... There were a number of poor performances out there, if you ask me. But yes, the only negative that I took from yesterday's match 
is the fact that we were very sloppy in possession. And you guys should know that I hate it when we are very sloppy in possession. And that is something that we do need to improve on in future games. Because if we don't, then we'll, we'll be susceptible to... Um, to we susceptible we 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 will um lose games um we will lose oh my god sorry guys we will get we will get beaten if we continue to do that and hopefully Thomas Tuchel drills it into them in forthcoming training sessions because that was not good enough yesterday and I'm sorry for stuttering guys so and I'm sorry for stuttering guys but yes that is it for my thoughts on yesterday's FA Cup fifth round tie against Barnsley please guys do put your thoughts in the comment section below and as always I'll do my very best to respond now to conclude this review I am going to give you guys my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture which will be taking place next Monday at Stamford Bridge against Newcastle United with kickoff at 8 p.m. UK time. Honestly guys, the performance we put in yesterday against Barnsley cannot be put in against Newcastle United on Monday, otherwise I can definitely see us losing because Newcastle United have great players in their team. And yes, while their form may be iffy at the moment sorry, while their form may be iffy at the moment, they they possess players who have um talent in abundance and they definitely have players who can cause us problems. Yes, we do have a very good record at Stamford Bridge against Newcastle United. I can't even remember the last time we, we lost to them at Stamford Bridge. If I'm not mistaken, it was in 2012. But yes, guys, we have to improve. Um, our, ball reten our ball retention has to improve. Otherwise, we will struggle against the Newcastle United team that is well known for um, sitting back and hitting their opposition on the counter-attack. And yes, in recent weeks, they have tried um, a different formation. They've tried using a diamond and I've seen it work to great effect against Everton. But um, we really have to improve and um, hopefully we do. But yes, that is it for my thoughts on Chelsea's upcoming Premier League fixture. And that is it for this review. I hope you all enjoyed it. Please do like, comment and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And I'll see you very soon for some more videos. Just before I go, I'm just going to give a shout out to one of my friends. And I'm not going to shout out their YouTube channel. I'm going to shout out their Twitch. Um, a link to it will be in the comment section below. Comment section? Description box below, sorry. And of course, the owner of this Twitch account is Lauren Langley, who is a good friend of mine. But yes, come on you blues, and peace.